Let's go to Kerry Crowley. Hey, Gabe, once you got Gossman in the game, was the plan kind of to stick with him because he is one of your more built-up pitchers, uh, given uh, his stamina at this point? Exactly, Kerry. Uh, we had him built up to, to be one of our, our bulk innings pitchers. Um, game plan was to have him come in after Tyler Anderson, but use a bridge to get to him if necessary. And um, we were able to do that with Rico and we go to Dallas. And then what's kind of been the more, the most frustrating element for you over these past two games, whether it be, you know, the offense not being able to get going, defensive mistakes, uh, what's been hardest to, to take? I think, I think I prefer to just kind of focus on today first. Okay. And, um, you know, today I think the most frustrating thing is that just from an all-around perspective, we didn't execute, didn't throw enough strikes, didn't play enough D, um, didn't see enough pitches, and, and, and we just didn't execute from any angle today. Thanks. Yep. Let's go to Alex. Hey, Gabe, Kerry asked you pregame about Jalen, I think, and the fact that you, you could use a, a right-handed bat um, against a right-handed pitcher. Is he set up pretty well now at the next two days facing lefties? And, and what kind of confidence do you think he'll take just from, from having that kind of a bat against somebody like Stripling? Yeah, I think that one – well, I thought he had three good at-bats tonight. Um, obviously the home run, but then two near misses. Um, the other thing I say is the reason that he was in the lineup today uh, was first to get his feet wet and give him an opportunity to build some confidence. And then number two, with Jalen, he's, he's got a history of some reverse splits, as does Ross, Ross Stripling. And so it made some sense, the combination of those two things, uh, to give him his first look today against Ross. Um, I do think we're going we're gonna to see Jalen in one of the next two games at minimum. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to, to letting him keep that momentum going because we really did believe and continue to believe that this is a confidence thing for Jalen and we want to keep that going. Mark Sanchez. Hey, Gabe. Uh, hey, Mark. We had about three weeks of camp. I mean, we know the arms are not stretched out, but we've seen some mental errors, some actual errors. Are you comfortable with the readiness of your team after the short camp? Yeah, so Kai and I were talking a little bit about this on the on the bench tonight, and uh, we we didn't see some of the sloppiness that we saw tonight in our first spring training camp. We didn't see it in our modified camp, and, and we certainly have seen it um, in these in these last couple of games. So those are things that that we have to clean up. We've got to tighten up our our practices and um, continue to um, elevate our focus, and you know we'll we'll get right to work on it. Do you think that can speak to the inexperience of, of the guys out there or some of the guys out there? That's not where, where I would point. Thanks. Sure. Let's go to Andrew Beggerly. Uh, yeah, Gabe, any time a team gets off to a rough start, you know, loses a couple out of the gate, you know, you always say, well, it's opening day, everything's magnified, there's a long way to go. You know, we know what the math is. You're, it, it more or less is equates to a little bit less than being 0-6 at this point if you paraded over 162 games. How do you or what is your be for just making sure that nobody panics or nobody uh, sort of makes more out of two losses than they otherwise would be? Um, I, I completely understand that perspective and, and why you kind of make it a, a math game. That makes sense to me. I kind of think like that oftentimes as well. In this particular case, I'm, I'm not sure it applies 100%. Uh, mostly be, not that the math doesn't apply, but more I don't think that anybody is – is, is panicking over one game, two games. Um, you know, we could very easily turn this around and get right back on track. And I think we're going to stay calm. We're going to stay measured. Uh, we're going to stay focused and, and intense. And we're going to be, we're going to be just fine. Henry. Henry. Sorry. Um, uh, Jeff Samarja, do you have a date for him to pitch? And is he in sort of the same boat as Johnny, uh, you know, one of the real veteran guys, uh, maybe a guy who's had some shoulder issues that you would like to, you know, have him start at the very beginning of the game? I, I just missed the last part. Start, we would like to have him start at the very beginning. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, have him start the first inning as opposed to coming in like a Gosman. Is he in the same boat as Cueto? And do you have a day for him to go? We have we have some good plans in place for Jeff. And and uh, 
can can we expect uh, fairly obvious that the lineup will look a, a little different tomorrow against the lefty? It'll definitely look different, and um, we will we'll use some of our right-handed bats in tomorrow's lineup. Thank you. Let's go to Alex. Um, well, when we talked at the beginning of this camp, you said you anticipate kind of three, four innings from guys early on. I, I, I don't know how much baseball you've gotten to watch the last couple of days, but a lot of guys are pretty regular. Um, there were, it was a complete game today. A lot of guys going six, seven innings. Is this just a matter of the, what you guys are comfortable with here um, in terms of getting guys built up early in the year? Yeah, I mean, I think we look at our, our roster construction and our, our pitching staff in general, and um, we understand that we believe in a, a longer, slower ramp to get guys healthy and to keep guys healthy and strong throughout a season. Um, so we, we lean on that first and foremost. And then we have a, a group of starters that can be mixed and matched a little bit. So we're, we're taking that approach as well. And John Shea. Hey, Gabe. Um, you, you talk about Jalen as an everyday player, uh, an overall player, but in particular, his power. Um, this is a team that hasn't really had a big slugger in a long, long time. Um, you know, how, how much could he give you? Uh, how, how much punch could, could he give you in, in, in a full season? And could those 35 translate, 35 from last year? So I think that Jalen has the power and the tools and the potential to hit 30 home runs in this league. Um, now, whether he's able to do that has a lot to do with, you know, his own drive and, his ability to make adjustments and his ability to maintain confidence. Uh, we're going to give him every opportunity to work in the cage. We're going to give him every opportunity to hone his craft. Um, and we're going to believe in him. And, you know, the rest is up to Jalen. And what do you think about Dubon's defense? You, you've played him at different positions, especially in the shortened spring. Has that kind of affected his defense at second? I mean, yesterday he didn't charge that ball. The guy scores. Um, today he didn't stop the ball on the throw down there. Another play, he looked to second in the shift and nobody was there. Um, maybe his timing is a little bit off here in the early going. So I think there's a, a component of, of moving a player around um, that has to do with their belief in their own ability to move around the diamond and be good at, at various positions. Um, there are some guys who just don't feel comfortable moving from position to position. Dubon falls into the category of I can play uh, an above average center field. We believe he can. I believe I can play an above average second base. We believe he can. And I can play an above average shortstop. And we believe he can. Um, again, these, he has some adjustments to make. You know, with respect to the, the double steal, I think that's the one you're talking about where Brantley came up and threw low, short hop Dubon. And if that ball was on target, I think we have, we're able to record the out of the play or at the plate. Is that the, the play you're talking about, John? Yes. Yeah. I, I don't think that that was, I'm not sure that that play falls on Dubon's shoulders. Um, from a positioning standpoint on that play, you could be a, a little bit shallower, but I'm not sure that's a, a, a result of us moving him around. Um, but I understand, like I get why that's, that's the line of questioning. Um, Again, wouldn't too much put too much stock in, in the two games that we've seen thus far. Thanks, Gabe. Sure.